podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Welcome, everybody. This is Joe from Celebrate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. As you can see, short sleeves, it's still summer, but we are already doing the interview of the startup of the month, September. Therefore, I do have Christina here. Hey, Christina, welcome. Hi, Joe. Nice to meet you. Totally my pleasure. Um, you are the uh, working for a startup called Sulfo Tools, which is the startup of the month in our media corporation with Frankfurt Forward in September. Congratulations to that. And before we dive a little bit into the story of Sulfo Tools, maybe we can talk a little bit about you, what you've done before and how you ended up with a startup because I've been looking a little bit at your uh, LinkedIn profile and apparently you're not only a chemist, but also an engineer. How did this happen? Yeah, so actually I studied chemistry. Um, I did my ground studies in Heidelberg and then I moved to Darmstadt. And uh, as Darmstadt is a technical university, you get, uh, you have to do technical chemistry and therefore you get the degree of an engineer as well. I have totally no clue what technical chemistry is. Can you and maybe 90% of our listeners enlighten about that just a <laughs> tiny bit? Yeah, it's um, mostly about um, process engineering and how to set up uh, processes and how to yeah, implement them and how to yeah, set up big yeah, big factories, big factories, plants, yeah. how to produce the chemistry. Yeah, okay, I do get it. Okay, here we go. And um, you then, for whatever reason, did your PhD and then you said, oh, phew, yeah, let's, let's start a startup. <laughs> on that. I, I, how did this happen? Actually, I was uh, doing my PhD in the um, yeah, area of biochemistry. And there I met Sasha, my co-founder, and yeah, the main inventor of our technology. Um, we did a lot of research projects together, and then actually it was an experiment gone wrong, kind of. Uh, and there by accident we found the new building blocks, which are the basis of our new technology. And um, yeah, as he developed it further, he asked me if I wanted to join him and start a startup. And so, yeah, that's how I came to Social Tools. <laughs> uh, not to say that those accidents are actually something that don't bring humanity forward. Actually, um, penicillin was discovered by accident. Yeah? So yes. um, accidents are pretty good uh, things. And um, what you guys are actually doing, because I assume like, Many of our listeners, our viewers here on YouTube, on Instagram, on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Deezer, Spotify, whatever, have no clue what those peptides are actually are and why you guys are called sulfo tools. Can, uh, can, can you give us a little introduction, um, very dumbed down, um, about peptides? Please. Yeah, no, <laughs> of course. Uh, um, actually, peptides are small biomolecules. They are also called small proteins, which uh, some of you might be familiar with. Um, so they are small biomolecules, which have a lot of different biological activities and therefore are used like, as active ingredients in a broad range of different products. For instance, in the pharmaceutical field, where they are used as cancer therapeutics or uh, in cosmetics, where they are um, yeah, commonly used in anti-aging products um, and yeah, also as, as food supplements. And uh, so we have developed a new production process uh, for these small molecules, which is more green, more sustainable, and also more cost-effective. And uh, to answer your other question, now we came to Sulfo Tools. Uh, actually, most names with peptides uh, was taken. So we decided to use Sulfo Tools because we, the new building blocks we developed 
uh, or reinvented, they have social groups attached to them. That's why we are called social groups. Okay. Uh, I was wondering when you talked about that, okay, you do peptides and who are your customers? I would assume big uh, uh, cosmetic companies, big uh, pharma companies. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. So, um, yeah, the majority of marketed peptides are produced chemically. And um, so our main customers are, of course, the pharmaceutical industry, which produce the peptides themselves or um, CMOs, the so-called um, custom manufacturing organizations, which produce the peptides um, for the pharmaceutical or the um, cosmetic industry. But also there are small um, academic um, yeah, um, working groups which uh, do peptides or which um, use peptides and they are also customers. There are apparently whole industries I wasn't aware of do exist. <laughs> you also talked about that you guys are producing your peptides greener. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because I do assume uh, your factory is not painted green, right? Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so uh, green means that we um, commonly peptides are produced uh, in a very toxic solvent called DMF, which is also classified as substance of very high concern by the European Chemicals Directive reach because of the very toxic um, properties. And uh, we have developed new water soluble building blocks for the uh, chemical synthesis of peptides, which allow us to substitute this hazardous organic solvent with water. So we just use water as a solvent for the production of peptides. Do you also get rid of maybe other dangerous chemical um, ingredients during this process? Or is this already green enough? So actually there's a very high demand of um, substituting this organic solvent um, with like greener and less toxic um, alternatives. There were also some papers published um, which discussed this uh, objective. Um, we also can substitute other solvents which are needed in the um, production process. Um, but this is very in detail. <laughs> don't worry, you, you don't need to go into detail or spell any secrets. Um, how big is your company because i do know you can do like outsourced production so either you're very big and do have your own factory or you're very small and rely on certain manufacturers that do it according to your recipe i would say so actually at the moment we are just three people um four if we include our um, co-founder and mentor our uh, doctor father um and we um, can produce in a small amount at the moment, but we are looking for investors uh, to scale up our own production. Are you already in the stage where you can simply say, okay, if you pump in like 20 million, this gets um, 20 million times the amount, or uh, do you still have a little bit trouble with scaling that? Well, actually, uh, we have developed um, the since. Uh, the, the production processes which which are easy scalable and also doable in um, yeah industrial scale but we just like the money to um, scale it up well fortunately you are on startuprate.io and i do know there's a lot of startups who already got approached by investors maybe that works for you everybody who'd like to reach out to you down here in the show notes there is a link to your personal linkedin profile so people can approach you directly as well as to your company website since we are talking about frankfurt forward here of course there's a question 
uh, what means Frankfurt or Rhein-Main for you. We may tell the people that Darmstadt is a little bit south of Frankfurt, but actually um, I once had um, a college friend visiting here and he was even much further away than Darmstadt from Frankfurt and he still called it Frankfurt area. So for every German, it's already a completely different city. For all American, it would be like Greater Frankfurt region, Darmstadt. We actually call it the Rhine-Main region. What does it mean for you? So the Rhine-Main region for us means that, of course, you have the airport close, uh, you have a huge um, uh, train station where you can reach every part of Germany very quickly, very easily. And of course, uh, as we are in the chemical industry or yeah, biochemical industry, uh, for the Rhine-Main area is the heart of um, that field. There are a lot of big companies there um, and potential customers. We may add that just across the Rhine and a little bit walking distance, there is BASF um, and the biggest chemical plant in the world in Ludwigshafen and also not too far away from here in Frankfurt Höchst there's also like a huge chemistry park with lots of different companies that's what you're going at right yeah of course and as we need a laboratory space uh, Frankfurt uh, is very yeah attractive for us I never heard somebody call Frankfurt attractive due to <laughs> laboratory space. <laughs> that, that, I'm doing this since quite some time, but that's a first. <laughs> it's a first for everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, only thing left for me to say is thank you very much. It was a total pleasure talking to you and everybody would like to learn more or reach out for you. Uh, for whatever reason, go down here in the show notes. There is a link to your LinkedIn profile and your website. Yes, thank you very much as well. It was a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure was all mine. Thank you. Thank Tschüss. You. Auf Bye. Wiedersehen. <laughs> That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.